Welcome to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. I am your host, Todd Alam. Joining me on this first segment for women's wrestling, head coach Troy Bell. Coach, uh, this past week was a bit of a bye week for your team as we get prepared for the Baldwin-Wallace Open coming up Sunday, November 24th at Berea, Ohio. Uh, but the bye week had some things going on. Uh, how did uh, preparation uh, go in this week and also happens a little bit of free time? Yes, it was a bye week, which was uh, good for us. We needed to get healed up. Um, we had a couple, you know, little nagging injuries, not, not the major, but it's always good to uh, be able to step back from competition and focus on uh, getting healthy again. Um, that's the main goal during this time of the year, to stay healthy as much as possible, but also step back and be, was able to take our time and uh, do some film watching, uh, work on some technique, and uh, as we learned in, uh, uh, at the Adrian Open, some, some technical things that we need to fix. And uh, so we was able to take our time and do that. So that was, that was it's always a good timing of the bye week uh, as we use that f football mentality, so so to speak. But no, it was very productive, and the uh, girls are getting healthy, and we're, we're ready to proceed with the uh, bottom walls open. Uh, as we move along, there's some other things besides uh, just the bye week and preparing for uh, the next uh, open. Uh, had some recruiting things to take care of uh, recently as well. Yes, yes. This, we just passed uh, last week with signing week. Um, and so we're excited about that. We have at four athletes that signed. Uh, Natalie Rush, who's uh, from Kennemack, um, ranked uh, ninth nationally. Um, so it'll be good to have her in the room and get some depth up there in the upper weight classes. Uh, so we're excited about that. But also uh, we signed uh, Sienna Landrum. Uh, she's uh, also nationally ranked at number 29. We're excited about her because, uh, um, you know, from 31 to 45, there's uh, three those three weight classes within 14 pounds, so we really need depth right there in the middle of the lineup, and uh, Sienna's going to be able to provide that to where she can almost go from 31 to 45, so uh, um, it's exciting to have somebody who's competed at Fargo. She went 5-2 and two at Fargo, so um, she's got that national experience, so we're excited about that. And uh, uh, Emmy, Emma Cunningham, she's our 124. She's, uh, you know, we're excited. She's a very explosive athlete, so uh, she brings a lot of um, experience in also, and uh, uh, Bailey Emery, who uh, also being around 124, 131. Um, I'm excited about her because of her wrestling IQ. She's She's been on the map pretty much her whole life, and her, her dad's a, a coach, so uh, getting her in the room and uh, with that wrestling IQ and experience, we'll be, we'll be excited about that. When it comes to recruiting these student athletes, what are some of the things that you look for? Not just uh, personality, we know work, eth work ethic and those kinds of things, but academics as well. What, do you, what type of uh, human being are you looking for when you're recruiting? Well, the character is the most important part. Um, you know, their family, um, academically, are they doing it in the classroom? Um, Will they mesh well with our family environment? Um, Will they um, embrace our motto is being the light in each other's life. So character is the most important thing. The wrestling will happen. Um, you know, if they come in, the, come in the room with some wrestling experience, being in the college room, um, being that we're, we're veteran deep, um, the, the wrestling is going to take care of itself. But the, the character um, is the most important part. Um, you know, family-driven um, individual who, uh, you know, loves to support and put light on each other. That's the most vital part of the program. Uh, coming up after the bye week, uh, we've got the Baldwin-Wallace Open again. It's Sunday, November 24th in Berea, Ohio. Uh, came off a very good, the duels in Adrian and then Adrian Open as well, did very well there. Uh, what are you expecting to see from uh, the Baldwin-Wallace Open and what other schools will be competing in that? Yeah, well, we're looking forward to the Baldwin-Wallace Open just because of uh, um, being able to you know, implement what we've been working on all this week uh, to see how productive it, it was. That would be a good measuring stick for us. Uh, the big thing that we're going to look at is our our athletes learning to uh, manage the matches, and uh, um, you know it's the vital part in college wrestling is being able to manage um, the integral part of, of the wrestling match. You know, like for example, uh, our one twenty four pounder Cynthia, she's she's pedal to the metal the whole match. It doesn't matter the score and everything. So we we you know she's an athlete that we might have to you know pull her back a little bit and let her uh, learn to manage the match as a freshman. But uh, um, I think that's the most vital part right now is we're going to look this weekend if the athletes are learning to manage those matches. 
When you have wrestlers like that, where they're pedaled to the metal, would you rather have them like that and have to reel them back or have to uh, have a wrestler where, hey, we, we got to get you to put the pedal to the metal a little more? Which one would you rather have? No, I much prefer Cynthia to <laughs> let's, just, let's just, you know, go full tilt and, and I can rein you back when it's required. It's, uh, as a coaching perspective, I mean, it's a lot easier to pull them back a little bit and that way they see um, why we're doing that and to get a girl to pull the trigger um, that's not pulling the trigger. That's that's uh, that's a lot of drill time in the room. Um, get to the point to where she's just doing it instinctively. That takes a lot more um, drill time in the room. But with with an athlete like Cynthia or, or other individuals, it's always easier to pull them back than to, to push them to pull the trigger. <laughs> but, uh, We've got the holiday season coming up here for everyone at West Liberty University, all the students. Uh, you mentioned how you, even though it's a new program here at West Liberty University, you've still got some veteran wrestlers on the squad. Uh, how do you see that going? Does it really help having that veteran presence when there's going to be a long break? It does. It does for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, every freshman is going to get homesick. Even the veterans get homesick. But how we navigate around that is vital. And the fact that there are so many veterans in the room, um, instead of the coach just uh, giving them the guidance, the veterans can do that. But the, the challenge at this time of the year is make sure we focus on what's ahead of us. And what I mean by that is let's focus right now on getting a good training session in. Let's focus on getting 1% better every day. Um, and then we can focus on the bottom Wallace when we get there and then navigate around this little break coming up for Thanksgiving and around the holidays for Christmas. Um, so, uh, you know, our athletes will be taking six days off for Christmas, and we're, and we're focused on those six days when the six days get here. So we want to make sure they enjoy time with their family when they're there and they're not taking too far ahead, um, which will affect the training process. So uh, that's that's the challenge as a coach is make sure they focus on what's in front of them um, and uh, the task at hand on that day, and then we'll, we'll enjoy our family when that break comes. Well, Coach, I appreciate you taking time out today and doing this interview with us. Again, good luck at the Baldwin-Wallace Open. Again, folks, it'll be Sunday, November 24th in Berea, Ohio. Uh, it'll be a good one for women's wrestling here at West Liberty University as we continue to see how this program progresses. Again, thank you, Coach, for being here, and we'll see you next time. Good. We appreciate uh, it. We will be right back for more Inside Hilltopper Athletics. From humble beginnings in 1837, West Liberty University has been home to thousands of students. Whether you're a recent high school graduate or looking to complete a college degree later in life, starting your educational career at West Liberty University will be the catalyst for your future. This is a place where you will discover who you are and where you belong, surrounded by lifelong friends and a supportive faculty and staff. Start your journey home at westliberty.edu. Welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Joining me now, head coach of women's basketball, Kyle Cooper. Coach, welcome back to the show. Uh, tough one the past week, uh, two games. Uh, the first one against Seton Hill, the toppers fell 89-72, uh, but this is one where Seton Hill came in as a buzzsaw. Uh, I believe they're still undefeated. Yeah, yeah, they are. And I'm on the WBCA Top 25, and you know they're kind of a French Top 25 team right now. You know, Maeve Gallagher known her a long time. Spent a lot of time kind of coming up together in this business, and now she's got her own program, and um, she's doing a phenomenal job. Uh, they play hard. They've got a veteran group, um, and they play kind of you know a unique brand of basketball that really it stresses you out in a lot of different ways. And, and unfortunately, they jumped all over us. Um, I did love our response in the yeah. second half of that game. You know, referenced that in uh, post game media and so on. But you know, the reality of it is against any team. You can't play uphill after you spot them what I believe was about 22 minutes of basketball, um, so a little bit more than the half. Um, against a good team, you, you sure can, and, and they're a good team. Yes. So I think they're going to be a team that we're going to see emerge as, as a regional you know, contender here, um, and, and that's where we're trying to aspire to get despite the start we've had, so it was good for us to see a team like that. But bright spots nonetheless, including – you know, battling with them all the way down the stretch there in that final second half. Yeah, toppers were able to force 21 turnovers against Seton Hill. Uh, two players in double figures, Jenna Ricardo against 17 points, Anna Lucarelli 13. There was absolute zero quit in that team. Like you said, uh, not the greatest first half, but that second half came off with a tear. Uh, the toppers really seemed to confuse and 
force uh, Seton Hill to struggle a little bit in that second half. It just wasn't quite enough. Yeah, and I just I thought we settled in a little bit. It, it's just a shame it took us a while to settle in. But I can tell you with this group, it's it's always going to be that way. The fight is always going to be that way. And my you know my job, our job as a coaching staff and our leaders in our program is to get us playing a more consistent brand of basketball with some of the things we can control, whether it's turnovers or finishing plays from a rebounding perspective. Um, but the reality of it is, is, is there's a lot that we're doing well. Um, we need to start getting see, getting an opportunity to win some games that would afford us to celebrate that stuff. Uh, toppers would then move on to a game against Walsh. Uh, the Toppers started this game pretty much how they left off the game against Seton Hill, went on a 7-0 run. Uh, but at halftime, it would be a two-point lead for the Toppers, 37-35. The game was tied at 66 with two minutes left, and Walsh went on a run themselves. The final score, uh, 73-66. Bailey Smith, 12 points. Carly Anker, 10 points. Uh, a good game for the toppers just kind of fell short at the end. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what more we could ask for right. as, as a program right now. You know, you, you play some really good basketball teams to open the year, and then you get another team that's kind of been a regional, a yep. regional power in, in their own region um, and, and known their staff a long time as well, and they've, they've got talent and they execute really well. But what more could you want than having, you know, a two-possession lead with the basketball three different times early in the fourth quarter? Um, unfortunately, some shots don't fall our way. Uh, we don't connect on some passes. And then all of a sudden, you know, one or two blown assignments on defense or an O board given up. Now all of a sudden it puts you in a stressful situation where maybe you can weather it when you had that two possession lead. So unfortunately, no, coming down to the stretch, it, it, it wasn't, um, it wasn't ours, but we were worthy of having an opportunity of winning. We, we weren't able to pull it out. And, and it's a shame because I thought, you know, we were worthy of it. I thought we played a game that while, you know, you wish some things go a little bit better at times, overall I thought we controlled a lot of the game, and it's just a shame we couldn't close it out. Uh, the way this topper team has been playing, uh, you're getting contributions from just about everybody across the board. Uh, but something that maybe some people don't notice uh, all the time, it's not getting points or rebounds. Paige Julian and a few other of the Hilltoppers, the ability to draw a charge. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk West Liberty women's basketball over the course of the years, we think offense. Whether it's three-point shots from pretty much the time the program began back in the 80s to now, uh, three-pointers. We've had Marissa Brown, uh, Kiki Simpson, some other great yep. post players as well. But the defensive side is coming up big for the toppers as well. Uh, be, the ability to take those charges, and it happens multiple times every single game. Is that something you focus on a lot in practice? Yeah, you know, it's not so much that we, we have to take the charge. It's we want to be positionally in a in a way that yeah. we can. We want to execute our style of defense and, and how we rotate and so on. But I think we've put a lot of time, this group has, in, in being a good defensive team. And you look at the, the scores of the games and there's a lot of people that would go, well, you're just not very good on defense. That's not the case. Right. It's it's what metrics are you going to look at? And for our team, you know, we're now averaging about five charges a game. That's that's a direct correlation to the buy-in we're getting off the basketball to protect one another in our system of rotations. Um, I think the other thing that we look at a lot as a program is first shot defense. You know, when you eliminate and you pull the second and third opportunities that sometimes we've been giving up over a stretch of four games, when you pull those pick six layups and you look at, okay, this is actually an opportunity for us to play. Yeah. You know, now all of a sudden you're looking at a team that's holding teams to around 40% on first shot defense. If we can continue to do that and then eliminate some of the other things, the turnovers, the second chance points, the pick six layups, those plays of impact, if you will, we're going to be in a great spot because there's no doubt about it offensively. We're also doing some really good things when we generate a shot, which just we need to generate about 10 to 12 more a game than we are right now. And so far this season that I've seen, again, I'm not a coach. I'm not the most knowledgeable basketball person whatsoever, but it's a good mixture of the players. Uh, the starting lineup's a good mix, but then uh, the timeliness and who you bring off the bench and when and what is needed, uh, I feel like that mix has done really well this year. Again, coming off the bench, players like Paige Julian, uh, Sekolovska as well. I hope I said her name right. I know she worked with us for football. Yeah. It was some broadcast yeah, stuff. Yeah. I'm trying She's to make sure. Really she played really well here this past week. Yes. Um, but no, and I appreciate you recognizing that in the defense because it has come a long way. We are getting a lift from a lot of players. And right now I think it's our job as a coaching staff to keep closing the gaps on some of the things that are harder for us to control. 
and then help them continue to get better from an execution standpoint. So if we can all get aligned in that, I think we're going to continue to make strides. The thing we also have to be careful of at the same time is not over coaching because we know some of our ills are things we can control. And as we learn to win and this group learns to win together, um, we will control those things. So we all know, we, you know, we felt like we gave one away Saturday. We got another tremendous opportunity tomorrow night to, to go get one. And we got to play well to do so, but I think we'll have a good chance to be there. Speaking of tomorrow night, the Toppers will host Ohio Dominican here at the ASRC at 5.30 p.m. Be sure uh, to get up here and watch this game live. If you can't, it'll be on Topper Station, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, I believe that's it. Uh, but we'll have it at several places streaming. So, again, 5.30 tomorrow night, uh, November 20th. Uh, get up here, Coach. Thank you for taking time out of your yes. day to do the interview. Yeah, and I, and I do want to thank Tauber Nation. Crowds have been great. We could use another one in a standalone game uh, tomorrow yep. night, 5.30, as, as Todd referenced. Then this weekend when we open conference play against Point Park. But the other thing is is uh, we had our Keep Wheeling Warm campaign launch this past Saturday. Very, very grateful for everybody that made contributions, whether money, product and so on that um has been something that's been close to our heart as a program for a long time so everybody impacting that uh we're grateful for it we appreciate it and you still have several weeks to do so don't hesitate to reach out to myself or coach seth okay, thank you coach uh, folks stick around we'll be right back for more inside hilltopper athletics from humble beginnings in 1837, West Liberty University has been home to thousands of students. Whether you're a recent high school graduate or looking to complete a college degree later in life, starting your educational career at West Liberty University will be the catalyst for your future. This is a place where you will discover who you are and where you belong, surrounded by lifelong friends and a supportive faculty and staff. Start your journey home at westliberty.edu. Welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Joining me now, head coach of football, Roger Wiley. Uh, the Toppers played their final game of the season at Wheeling. It was a loss 40-16, to but the Toppers would score. Uh, scores came from Tyler Waddell, a 32-yard field goal, and Levi Goulian hit Ben Turner on a 75-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter. Hunter Patterson would take a screen pass, uh, 41 yards for a touchdown as well. Uh, Patterson finishes this season with 858 yards rushing, nine touchdowns, 417 yards receiving, four more touchdowns. Uh, that's for 1,275 yards total and 13 touchdowns on the year. Uh, great job for Hunter Patterson. Yeah, he had a phenomenal season. And, you know, obviously, if you look, the all conference stuff got out. And as a head coach, you know, I don't think anybody's completely satisfied. You know, I think he's one of the top players in the conference, and he ended up only being second team all conference, and that's um, amazing to me, the type of player, the type of person he is. And obviously, um, you know, hopefully he comes back with a chip on his shoulder, or, you know, when he plays football, because he's definitely one of the best football players to play. And Ben Turner had a very good season as well, 854 yards receiving and five touchdowns. Tyler Waddell, the kicker, ends his season a perfect six for six on field goals, a long of 40 yards. Uh, this season saw a few different quarterbacks play, but some good play out of each one of them. Your thoughts on them this season? Yeah, and we, I mean, we we still missed uh, too many wide open receivers. We didn't get the checks we needed to at crucial times, and so. Um, they're all young, you know, for the most part, except for Koa and, and Dunleavy who are graduating. So we have to, you know, get our younger guys to see the, the game the same way that we do as a coaching staff to be successful. Um, and going back to Ben, Ben had a phenomenal year. He ended up being first team. Um, you know, I thought, that, you know, we had a couple guys. Obviously, when you nominate somebody for all conference, um, you consider them first team guys and you know the reality of things are that the way all conference things normally shake out is based off of your overall record but you know we're well represented we had second team Will Balgo at tight end second team Elijah Mike uh, defensively uh, Zach Vincente Delano Marcellus smoked me second team that you know um, Trent Crawford had probably one of the better years of anybody that's played football here since I've been here and we've had some players of the year and he only made second team and then Tyler Waddell was you know I think he's one of the best kickers in the league the problem is is that we didn't he didn't have a whole lot of opportunities compared to everybody else and part of that was 
we score from so far out, we didn't have a lot of long sustaining drives that got stuck in the red zone that we had to make. There was only one time during the year where I had to make a decision whether we kick a field goal or uh, went for the touchdown, and uh, you know, and that was against Charleston at the end of the game. And at that point in time, we're going to go for a touchdown. Yeah. And so, you know, there wasn't any other opportunity. I think every time we had the opportunity, we kicked the field goal for the most part, or we scored if we went for it on, you know, fourth and short. So anyways, you know, overall, a very disappointing year. Um, I don't think there's no way that, you know, we were a two-win team and we got to find a way to get better. Uh, again, we talked a good bit during these coaches' shows throughout the season about the youngsters on the offensive line. Uh, how did you feel they performed? Again, I'm not a coach. I thought they did pretty well this year. Yeah, and if you look at it, you know, Elijah Mike was a senior. Everybody else is back, you know, and, you know, everybody else I thought played at an all-conference level. I don't just nominate kids because they are not deserving. I wish they'd put out the nomination form so they can see. I think they, they were all deserving of it. Unfortunately, I don't vote for them. You know, you only can vote for kids on the other team. But like I said in the beginning, from day one, even my first year as a head coach, even when I first started coaching, there's been a million kids here that should have got first team all conference and didn't or had some sort of recognition and didn't. And I'm sure every coach in the conference feels the same way. Um, unfortunately, you know, it comes down to there's only a certain amount of spots and, uh, you know, when you're voting and you got such a big conference, you know, a lot of people aren't going to get the um, recognition they deserve. And so, but, you know, on the positive, a lot of these players other than, you know, the defensive guys that made all conference have a chance, you know, to make all conference again and prove people wrong. And that's, you know, that's all you can do. Um, at the end of the day, it is what it is, and you got to move on and go. Uh, it's been fun watching this team this year, uh, not just the upperclassmen, the guys that have performed extremely well and gotten those all conference nominations and honors, uh, but some of these youngsters as well. And defensively, uh, some of the young names I could think of Thompson, uh, the rush end has done a very good job this year. Yeah, and he came into service when Briandre got hurt. I thought Kadarius uh, Frazier did an unbelievable job for his first year, and, he, you know, his thing is trying to stay healthy. Um, he was banged up. He, he was, a you know, a true freshman. Um, you know, Thompson was a true freshman. So, you know, the future is bright, but we have to learn how to play well together as a team, and that's, you know, one thing that we're going to address coaching staff-wise in the off season is what, you know, we need to do a better job of getting them on the same page. And so we will handle that. I haven't deferred from adversity in, you know, my whole time here, and we'll get this turned around sooner than later um, because we have some really, really good, talented players, and but we can't, you know, this day with the transfer portal and all those things, and, you know, we've actually become the junior colleges. If you look at it, a lot of schools are recruiting 100% from the portal and waiting for the all-conference things that come out and looking at them. And we lost kids last year. We'll lose kids this year. Um, but we really need the other one that, you know, had a really good year. And he had a really good year last year is Tyson Faso Amano. I yeah. mean, he really, really stepped up and played a key factor um, in – you know, what we were doing. And he was probably one of the, you know, other than Trent and, you know, a couple other guys, he was a really, really consistent player. We knew week in and week out what you're going to get out of him. And if you know what you're going to get out of a player, then it's easier to coach him. But sometimes, you know, when you get a player that he makes really great plays and really bad plays, that's the hard part about coaching. Uh Regular season is over. Uh, we head into, I guess, a kind of a recruiting territory now as the off season begins. Uh, when do you start in your recruiting trail? It never ends. You know, you because you know it's kind of the trickle down effect when you know the Division One schools are recruiting players as sophomores and and juniors, and then you know not recruiting you know a whole lot of seniors. You know, maybe you know you can look at less than two percent of their recruiting classes come off of one-year recruits. And so you, we have to be there earlier and earlier to pick up the pieces when, you know, they don't get what they want. 
correct. And so hopefully we'll, we'll continue. We have some visits scheduled as early as tomorrow um, to get the train rolling again. Well, Coach, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to speak with us and do this coach's show. Uh, it'll be a good a bit, of, a bit of a break here as it'll be the beginning of next year, the preview show. Uh, the next time we'll get to talk to you on one of these. All right. I appreciate all your time, and thank you. And thank you, Teresa, for everything you guys do for us, Liberty. Uh, not a problem, Coach. Uh, folks, stick around. We've got one more segment to go on Inside Hilltopper Athletics. From humble beginnings in 1837, West Liberty University has been home to thousands of students. Whether you're a recent high school graduate or looking to complete a college degree later in life, starting your educational career at West Liberty University will be the catalyst for your future. This is a place where you will discover who you are and where you belong, surrounded by lifelong friends and a supportive faculty and staff. Start your journey home at westliberty.edu. Welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Joining me now, Mackenzie Johnson, head coach of women's volleyball here at West Liberty University. Uh, the last time, since the last time we spoke, it seems like it's been a month for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of things have happened. Toppers had two games, fell short in both. Uh, the first one at Frostburg State. Frostburg is on a tear this year as well, one of the top teams in the Mountain East Conference. Mm -hmm. uh, Wheeling University, we all know about Wheeling University Volleyball. They're one of the top teams in the nation and region, mm -hmm. not just the conference. But it was senior night mm -hmm. uh, against Wheeling here, and it was a good send-off for some of those seniors. Yeah, I think we, we really enjoyed the night, you know, despite the loss. Um, I kind of always tell my players, as long as we're being in the moment and giving it all we got and you know, being able to leave the court without any regrets in our performance and things like that, you know, it's a win at the end of the day. Um, but getting to honor our seniors, all of their hard work throughout their years in this program is something really special. Uh, I think Paige Gross had a really, really good game. She was one of a senior, er, our seniors who we celebrated on Friday, so seeing her have kind of a, a good standout game on her senior night, it, it was cool to watch. Uh, this season, as it has gone along, I know it's your first year as the full-time head coach. Everyone has expectations going in. They want to do well. And I know the season is not over yet, but just for the regular season, did it go as you expected or a little better? What did, how did you feel that went? I think it went just about as expected. Um, you know, there was there's some teams, you know, some games we have regrets on and, and could have performed better. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think our growth as a team is it, it huge. I think our serve receive has gotten so much better. And I think, you know, a few players have become more reliable, more confident. Um, so just seeing our overall team growth the past few months, it's been cool to watch and kind of, you know, be the leader in that, in that change. Yeah. <laughs> and, and throughout this uh, season and watching the ladies play, when it comes to recruiting, you knew what you were looking for before this season. Has any of that changed as this season has gone on and the things that you look for in recruiting? Um, I think, you know, the biggest thing that I always tell my recruits and I always tell the girls on, on the squad is that, you know, I'm never going to offer a player that's never been into the in, in our gym or met our girls in our locker room. Um, I tell recruits that I recruit personality just as much as I do skill, um, you know, as a coach and, you know, their teammates. I mean, their teammates, they spend like 95 percent of their time together. I spend like 80 percent of my time, you know, during the season with them. So being able to enjoy the person that they are and enjoy their personality and what they bring to the team is super, super huge. Um, it also, you know, helps with team culture, um, having, you know, personalities that are conducive with one another. Um, so in, in terms of, you know, uh, skill set, maybe some things have changed in, in our needs for the next few years. Um, but I think overall, you know, that personality aspect, it's really huge for me in terms of culture. Well, now that the regular season is over, we head to the postseason. The toppers will uh, compete in the Mountain East Conference tournament. I believe the first one, first match is against Concord. Yep. Uh, you played them just once this season mm -hmm. so far. Uh, you won here at the ASRC in the Dig Pink match, mm -hmm. three to one. Uh, we look back at that one. Is this team that you ha is the team the same now, or have they gotten better since that point? I think we're we're as of yesterday probably the same. I think these next two practices will say a lot about our growth in terms of consistency. Um, that's been I think our biggest struggle. You know, going into the second half of our regular season is finding our consistency. Um, you know, I tell the girls, I'm like, you guys are a different team, set to set, match to match, practice to practice. But, you know, what does it take to show up as the same team every single day despite what's going on? Um, I think Concord is very strong defensively. They're very scrappy. Um, so that challenges our offense to be a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more, you know, tricky with their shots. Um, but I think our girls are up for the challenge, absolutely. 
Uh, and this team, uh, not necessarily strangers to postseason play the Mountain mm -hmm. East Conference tournament, but yours as a first-year head coach. Uh, have any of the players kind of jabbed you, give a little rib about it being the first-year head coach and, and getting to the postseason? Um, I think at, at this point it's like a program expectation. <laughs> um, so I don't think that, you know, the girls are surprised. I know I'm not necessarily surprised at all. Um, but it's about it's not about getting there. It's about what we do when we get in that gym and get in that atmosphere. Um, I'm super excited, you know, for our freshman class, our one transfer who have never, you know, experienced an MEC conference tournament. Um, so getting that experience and getting to share that experience, you know, for the last time with our senior class and the first time with our our newcomers this year, it's going to be special regardless of the outcome. Yeah, it's going to be real fun getting to the postseason and see mm -hmm. this kind of play again. Like you said, it's become commonplace here at West Liberty. Uh, from coach to coach to coach, it just seems like no matter what, mm -hmm. it continues. Uh, that's what I'm waiting to see, uh, an assistant coach that you bring in at some point, that you're going to get big enough, you're going to win enough matches here, you're going to move on uh, to a Division One school somewhere. That's I'm just waiting. That <laughs> seems to be the line of how things go here yeah, for volleyball. <laughs> it's kind of insane. Uh, as we build towards this, again, to, uh, what to expect from Concord. Uh, played them once already, but just the message to the team, I, I feel like they – probably have a good idea of what to expect and what needs to be done. Yeah. I told the girls um, yesterday in practice um, and Sunday in practice is, you know, at this point in the season, everyone's playing their best volleyball. Um, we're going to see teams that are just as good as we are, if not a little bit better. Um, and in those matches, it's about, you know, our fundamentals. It's about our discipline. So, you know, how locked in can we be on the little things, you know, for the bigger outcome, I think is the biggest thing. Um, you know, taking it point by point, working on our, our winning our mini games. So, Trying to be where our feet are and not let the team get overwhelmed in, in stressful moments, I think, is the biggest thing going into this weekend. And again, a, a veteran presence on this team. We talked about, you just talked about some of the freshmen mm -hmm. on this one, their first experience. Uh, Kaya White being one of them. Mm -hmm. It'll be her first experience at a college postseason. Mm -hmm. Do you see any little bits of nerves whatsoever with the younger players? Uh, I think Kai White is very, very good at masking her nerves. Um, <laughs> I never think that she's nervous. And then I talk to my captains after, and they're like, yeah, she was a little <laughs> bit nervous before that match. Um, but I think Kai does it. She's a competitor. Uh, she loves to compete. She she wants to win, I think, more than what she wants to breathe sometimes. Um, but, you know, she's been capable of showing up in big matches, and she's, she's proved herself time and time again this season. Um, so I think, you know, what's on the line? You know, you're fighting for your season. You're really – fighting for just another day to play with this team. And, and I tell them all the time, you know, in this sport, your team is going to look different every single semester. Like, so enjoy the moment. So I know that Kai is one of those players, you know, she may be young, she may be a serving target on the court, um, but she definitely, you know, holds her own offensively, defensively too. Well, Coach, good luck against Concord. Again, the toppers will take on Concord in the first round of the Mountain East Conference tournament coming up again. Good luck. Wish you nothing but the best. Thank and you. <laughs> I hope we come back and do another one of these shows talking about moving on yes. <laughs> and uh, continuing to play in the postseason. Yes, me too. <laughs> well, folks, stick around. We'll be right back for more Inside Hilltopper Athletics. From humble beginnings in 1837, West Liberty University has been home to thousands of students. Whether you're a recent high school graduate or looking to complete a college degree later in life, starting your educational career at West Liberty University will be the catalyst for your future. This is a place where you will discover who you are and where you belong, surrounded by lifelong friends and a supportive faculty and staff. Start your journey home at westliberty.edu. Welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Joining me now, head coach of men's basketball, Ben Howlett. Uh, two games since the last time we had one of these shows. Uh, first one was against Shepard, a familiar foe, no mm -hmm. longer in the conference, but uh, plenty of plenty of matchups with Coach Namalik and his uh, Shepard Rams. The Toppers would win this 92-72. Uh, a pretty good game where the Toppers had 19 assists on 13 made field goals. Uh, five players finished in double figures. Kyler D'Agostino, 19. J.J. Harper, 18.7 rebounds. Finn Woodward, 16 points, 5 rebounds for assists. Dante Spadafora and Cameron Tinsley each had 11. Uh, very good game for the toppers against Shepard. Yeah, first off, happy belated birthday to oh, you. Thank you, I appreciate wanna, I want to make sure I get that out there. But good quality win for us. Coach Amlick has played against us for you know 10 years, knows, knows how to attack us, and has some success you know early in his career against us. So we knew we were going to get their best shot. But 
Um, good quality win. Wasn't real happy with we let them come back in the, in the late in the first half. So got to clean that up. But but I thought you know overall effort was good, executed well offensively and defensively, and a good quality win for us. Uh, it was a big one again. The toppers. Uh, only turned it over three times against the Rams and forced Shepard to turn it over 17 times in a 20-point victory. The Toppers would get to 3-0 and after that one. Then uh, last night, they took on Virginia Union, a team from the CIAA, and uh, maybe not a ton of familiarity with them, uh, but have played teams in their conference. Uh, the stingy 2-3 zone, again, uh, tremendous. It seems to, from time to time, have an effect on the toppers, and it seemed to last night. Yeah. First off, wanted to schedule them just because they're always good, and I think they have a chance to win their league, and obviously a really good in-region opponent for us. Um, they don't come out of that zone either. That, that's no. kind of what they do. Our MO is we're going to press. Their MO is they're going to play zone defense for 40 minutes. and um, Really good test for us. I think they're going to win a ton of games. Took us a while to crack the zone. I think in the first half we were trying to do a little bit too much. Um, I thought the second half we finally cracked it. And, and I think a guy you got to look at is Finn Woodward. I thought he did a really good job of getting in the gap and you know, creating plays for us. If he wasn't the one scoring, he was finding guys on the perimeter. And um, kind of talked about it last night with Scott. Like when two of your best shooters go one for 15 in DA and, and Dante and you still win by double-digit points, that's a good win. That's a really good win, and those guys aren't going to shoot like that all season long. They've, they've been in the gym all day today. Um, I expect them to come out of their little uh, rut that they're in, um, but just a really good quality win for our program and a win that we needed as far as a team. And speaking of Dante, he was able to get one of the milestones of his career, hit his 200th career three-point shot last night for West Liberty. Uh, Kyler D'Agostino, once again in double figures, had 15. Then he had J.P. Dragas with uh, three three-pointers, had 11 points. Great job for him as a youngster. Yeah, and been kind of waiting on that from J.P. And I think the first three games you saw him be a typical freshman, right? Made some mistakes, maybe a little bit nervous. Um, but yesterday made some timely threes. again, And we were struggling a little bit offensively there early in the second half. And he made a couple big threes for us. And I thought his passing was really good, too. And that's what kind of won us the game is we kind of settled down and, and started passing the ball. And I thought JP was a big part of that. Yeah. Uh, and then both of these games, Shepard and Virginia Union, they got some size on their team, some length. And in the years past, or historically, with this type of style of offense or the type of style of basketball, sometimes uh, the height and length can give this problems. The toppers were able to weather it both times, especially Virginia Union in their heights. And uh, the toppers, again, found a way to get through that zone and able to do well against that style. Yeah. First was with Shepard, they, they played two bigs the entire game against us. And not only were they big, they were 6'9", 6'10". <laughs> and, you know, we're not the biggest of teams, so we've got to out-hustle those guys, and I thought we did versus Shepard. And then across the line with Virginia Union, just their size, you know, every position they were pretty much got two to three to four inches on us and um, just thought our guys fought really hard and didn't let it bother us and actually out-rebounded Virginia Union by one yep. in, in the end. So I'm proud of our effort on, on the glass, and I know you're going to get in the Point Park here in a second, but we're going to see that <laughs> versus Point Park here um, yeah. on Saturday. They rebound the wall, rebound the ball very well too. Uh, we've seen throughout the years different styles from uh, players individually on West Liberty's team. Uh, right now, Finn Woodward, we kind of thought we knew what he would bring to the table from the past two seasons, but now he's showing off his passing ability as well. Uh, we speak about it on the broadcast. It almost reminds you a little bit of Eric Meininger back in the day and his passing ability. Uh, in my mind, I still got to see a little bit more from <laughs> Finn. Eric was just unbelievable yeah. uh, at passing the basketball, but... Uh, Finn just continues to get better at every part of the game. Yeah, third-year player, knows knows what we want, and we're going to rely on him a little bit more this year just to kind of do a little bit of everything. And, and he's guarding the post for us. He's leading our team in assists. He's scoring double figures for us. And I'm going to one-up you on this. And you, you, you said, reminds you of Eric, reminds the coaching staff a little bit of Coach Butler. Himself. Okay. So if you can be in those two's, like, company, you're in good shape right now. So Finn's, Finn's going to have a really good year for us. And – we're going to keep relying on him. Uh, so far this year, uh, the Toppers are 4-0 and on the young season. Uh, as you said, Point Park comes to the ASRC at 4 p.m. this coming Saturday. Uh, not too familiar for Topper Nation. Haven't seen a ton of Point Park. They are a new member of the Mountain East Conference uh, based in downtown Pittsburgh. So you might get a chance to play under the bright lights in a big city <laughs> uh, coming up here later in the season. But they come to you first. What can we expect from the team from Pittsburgh? 
Yeah, so we're familiar with their coach. He was at Slippery Rock. Um, so we had some battles with them back in the day. So very defensive-oriented team. Um, you know, don't make mistakes defensively. And a lot of their offense is just off the offensive glass. So, you know, they're able to go get rebounds and, and get second chance opportunities. So, you know, a big emphasis for us, you know, in that game is we got to block out. And not only block out, go get the basketball through the blockouts. And, um, you know, we need to let our defense be our offense and get some, you know, turnovers against them and get some easy scores. But we're going to have our hands full, especially on the, on the offensive glass. Well, again, just four games into this season, uh, how do you feel this team has meshed the second group coming in and being able to change that four at a time? It seems to be working well. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's not, we're not where we're going to be in March. Like we're going to continue to get better. Um, right now, the way I word is we're just okay. And, but we're going to have time. We've got time. This team just needs to keep playing. We need yep. to keep playing, not only in practice, but we need to keep playing in games. And, um, a lot of these guys are new, so we can't let them get comfortable just because we're four and oh. You know, we can't let guys just say, okay, we're 4-0, we can quit working hard. No, we need, to, we need to keep working hard. And nobody cares that we're 4-0 right now. Like, the only thing that matters for us is Point Park on Saturday. We need to be 5-0. and And then after that, we need to be 6-0 and going into the Thanksgiving break. So that's kind of where our mindset is right now. Well, you can let the players know. I think it was J.J. Harper last night that had a dunk. And we had our cameraman right under the bucket, a uh, football player. Uh, Teresa, what was? Corey. Corey, Corey Miller. I almost said Colin, but Corey Miller, right under the basket with the camera, the look of amazement on his face was just tremendous. I wish he would have been on camera as well, not just holding it. But, Coach, you're impressing everybody so far this year. Uh, folks at home, you got to get up to the ASRC on Saturday, 4 p.m. The toppers take on Point Park. Uh, before that, at 2 p.m., the women's basketball team plays as well. Get up there to catch the basketball doubleheader. Coach, thank you for being here with us. Folks, we will be right back for more Inside Hilltopper Athletics. From humble beginnings in 1837, West Liberty University has been home to thousands of students. Whether you're a recent high school graduate or looking to complete a college degree later in life, starting your educational career at West Liberty University will be the catalyst for your future. This is a place where you will discover who you are and where you belong, surrounded by lifelong friends and a supportive faculty and staff. Start your journey home at westliberty.edu. Welcome back to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. Joining me now, head coach of men's wrestling, Danny Irwin. Coach, uh, the toppers had to travel all the way to Tennessee to King, a uh, very well-known wrestling school and program uh, in the King Open in Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, the toppers did pretty well for themselves down there. Yeah, it was a fun weekend. A little bit of a travel, but uh, you get to head south and you know, see some new teams and Ultimately, um, with that, just a good mix of competition, I thought was good. You know, we have a lot of new faces in our lineup, and just ultimately uh, some young guys trying to you know, learn how to win now on the on the college scene rather than you know having the successful careers that they had on the high school scene. Uh, in this one, the freshman Logan Davis won the 125 pound weight class. Uh, five to four in the finals. Uh, also, Caden Herbert was eighth in 125. Uh, at 133, freshman Josh Carmen lost a tough 10-9 decision uh, in the finals to finish second. Tony Wood was sixth at 141. Braxton Miller was seventh at 157. Levi Abbott was seventh at 165. Uh, and at 174, uh, two toppers, Gabe uh, Blizenbach and Tony Abbott were third and fourth. Parker Bentley, sixth at 285 all around great showing and honestly for the youngsters the freshmen did extremely well yeah I, I thought they competed really well and I think ultimately too like I mentioned just a little bit ago that that learning to win and ultimately that uh, there's nothing we can hang our hat on you know that uh, the Pajan Sound duel was fun we learned a lot about ourselves but getting to see some some more competitors and you know work some positions that we're focused on that um, yeah that's that's why we do it you know it's a lot of fun but ultimately a guy like Tony Wood he you know, wins a crazy good match. He you know, majors a national rank wrestler, and in his first match um, out, yeah, he uh, I think he was either up one or it was tied, and uh, kind of forced through a position and lands on his back, gets fouled, uh, doesn't let him phase him, comes back. I think he wins the next five matches uh, to finish fifth, and ultimately, you know, that's a lot of what we're doing. You know, with yeah. these these tournaments that we've scheduled and the kind of how we set our schedule up, that. 
Um, we're learning match to match inside of a, a tournament like the King Open, much like you know heading you know, to to Bolton Wallace yeah. this weekend. That uh, another mix of getting several matches, so then we can grow, 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 and ultimately a you know, Fairmont State coming in Thursday yeah. night. That uh, um, not only do we want to grow, but we, we want to put some uh, exciting wrestling on the map for our fans. Yeah, it's been tremendous to see how this team has continued to just progress throughout the years with you as the head coach. Uh, last week, Parker Bentley was the wrestler of the week for the MEC. Uh, this week, uh, finishing sixth, uh, did pretty well at the King Open. Uh, it just seems like these wrestlers continue to, again, uh, climb the hill. They just continue to do it and work hard. Uh, as we move forward, what do you expect from your team? A uh, bit of a was it a bye week this week, or do we have a little bit of time in between these uh, opens? Well, it's it's really no no downtime. This okay. is kind of the the last week of of a you know a good steady push where we've competed a lot. We'll get some some downtime during Thanksgiving, yeah. but you know we we didn't get back to late. You know, kudos to our support staff. You know, our our bus driver, uh, just everybody involved. You know, we had safe travels back, and but uh, turning right around into. You know, having a home event Thursday against the Fairmont State team that's done yeah. nothing but get better over the years. We get to welcome, you know, also too, you know, one of uh, you know, the legends himself, you know, you know, Cole Leia, who's down assistant coach at Fairmont. You know, he had just, you know, a one of a kind career here, you know, not only athletically but as a student athlete. You know, here too that uh, we'll get the chance to, to honor him Thursday night, um, along with some of our other alumni. It's, uh, it's going to make for a fun night. I always wonder with those kind of situations with Cole this time. Knowing that he's coming back to a place that loved him, that he loved, even though he's coaching for a different school, I know the competitiveness of everyone. Does he want to beat us in the worst way, or is there a little soft spot for us still? Uh, I don't think there's a soft spot. You know, <laughs> you know, he didn't have the career he had because he has any soft spots. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, you know, he was toughened up. You know, his, you know, his, his parents. Uh, you know, especially with Lisa. That uh, man. Uh, you know, she's a, she's the toughest one of the bunch. And when she walks in the building, yeah, wrestlers might be tough on the mat, but Lisa's the toughest one in the building. And uh, well, ultimately, yeah, he wants to win. He's he's work, pushing those guys hard. He's he's showing them what. Uh, you know, it takes and, uh, you know, not so much technique, but lifestyle. And uh, so he wants to come in here and, you know, see his guys win. And, you know, I wouldn't want anything different. You know, same thing with you know, their head coach. You know, he's he's done a good job. And just ultimately, I, you know, they want to come in and win. And no different than us traveling down to King, that that's the type of competitors we want to face because it's not fun, uh, you know, wrestling people that just lay down for you. <laughs> uh, well, it seems like so far this year I was going to ask, I know it's still early in the season, but the youngsters that are now into the program, uh, obviously in the King Open uh, between Logan Davis and Josh Carmen did pretty well for themselves. But how do you feel that the youngsters are acclimating to college life and the team in general? Well, I think they, they've seen what they needed to see on the, the competitive side. Like, hey, uh, you're not going to your local high school no more and yeah. you know, maybe wrestling somebody that uh, you know, their parents are making them wrestle or uh, they just needed something to do. You're wrestling, you know, individuals that, you know, they're, they're focused, you know, they're determined and they're not rolling over for nobody. And, you know, acclimating to that, that uh, it's going to be a tough one every time out. Uh, not everybody handles that well, but I've been really excited about what we've done in the room, what we've demonstrated thus far competitive-wise off the mat. Uh, you know, hey, the great stuff has been been good. You know, they, they're hand community service. They, they've been on top of it, but they're also guys that have been around the program a lot yeah. with, you know, being the camp and just, you know, you know, being, you know, essentially referrals to current guys that were already on our team and just things of that nature that I think the acclimation process was been pretty. Some of these guys I've known for four or five years. Oh. I may, I know some of them maybe even better than uh, what I do, some of our third-year guys, you know, just because of the length of time I've been with them. Well, with Fairmont State coming to town again, it's November 21st, Thursday. They come to the ASRC. Again, Fairmont State at West Liberty. I don't care what sport it is. Get here. Support the toppers. Uh, but except for Coach Leia, we know what to expect from him. What can we expect from the rest of the team of Fairmont State? Well, they, they have some other really good individuals that uh, you know, did well at the you know, conference uh, you know, championships last year. I uh, think probably a couple of their, their better wrestlers, uh, you know, Colton Stone King, he was at the national tournament, 141 pounds last year, I believe. You know, he'll be in the, the lineup this upcoming Thursday night. They have a national qualifier from two years ago that I think was maybe out with injury last year that is at the 174, 184 pound weight class. And, you know, they've added a, a new a new batch of guys. And just ultimately, I think they're they're going to scrap. You know, they've had some good early season, uh, you know, results. And, I, you know, I would expect just something that uh, – 
yeah, we're going to go out there and be aggressive and stingy. And I think that we'll light up the scoreboard and, you know, there'll be music, there'll be graphics, there'll be atmosphere there. And, you know, the only way they could get the atmosphere better is for more people to show up. I know we got some high school teams attending. So if you're out there, high school team wants to attend, you know, it's just something to get you on the guest list. Alumni, you know, we had, I think, right around 60 alumni last year. You know, we keep raising that number up. Uh, just let them know out the door, hey, alumni, alumni get in, in free, you know, uh, you know, for our alumni night and just little things like that that uh, uh, will make for, for a fun night and, and make it, uh, you know, another home opener success, you know, on and off the mat. Absolutely. Again, folks, it'll be Thursday, November 21st here at the ASRC on the campus of West Liberty University, Fairmont State comes to town again you better get here and support these toppers it's going to be a great one coach thank you for taking time out of your day to be with us folks thank you for watching we will see you next week on another edition of inside hilltopper athletics